capture photographic and video evidence of the grays. In fact, the the um, peeping, peeping the peeping Tom, Tom <laughs> uh, you know, peeking in your window. I always laugh at that when I see that video because that you know when you set up the night vision camera, which you know we we mainly do paranormal research, ghost hunting. So I'm very familiar with you know the setup, and you're setting it up, looking out that window, and just seeing that thing raise up poke its head up look around blinking the eyes it was just it was just amazing and uh, i know you would you had gone on uh, larry king with that video and didn't they i didn't see the clip but didn't they try to have some animator or try to recreate it yeah you know i get a lot of flack for that and um for that particular clip but it but it is what it is and um yeah they did they there was a local group that wanted to do, funny that they hired these guys. There was a local group that wanted to investigate my experiences, and I was warned to um, stay away from them because they were nut jobs. I mean, these guys were like 50 years old, and they were into goth, and they had, you know, no <laughs> pants and long black dyed hair, and they were older than I was. <laughs> oh, my God. And so, so it's like, stay away from these guys. They aren't going to. You know, they if they get involved, they you know your case is going to go to crap because they're they're just nut jobs. And so these guys had it out for me. You know, they didn't they they try to debunk everything that anybody's ever done. Now that's what they do, and they try to ride the coattails of any famous cases. Well, they were a and paranormal so they, group, were they not? Yeah, they're a paranormal group, and they try to say that they're professionals, but one guy's jobless another guy works at a photo photo shop you know uh, printing pictures for people and that's what they do it works so, for walmart <laughs> well there's not yeah, very many not. paranormal investigators that really do it full-time they all usually they all have part-time jobs yeah or i mean it, jobs elsewhere in our group we have well, you know these guys are trying to say they're, prof they're professionals and they have credentials to debunk my case but they couldn't debunk it, number one, because they had no way to get the video to debunk it. And number two, they just wanted to be famous and be on Larry King. Yeah. And unfortunately, I... um, they they actually helped my case because when they were on Larry King, they were rude and crude and, you know, that's just the way it was. So. Well, I mean, I laugh whenever I hear credentials. I mean, nobody has credentials for paranormal research. I'm sorry. We we all have our day jobs. We all do this on the side to help people and, you know, and do our own research since, you know, obviously mainstream science doesn't want anything to do with it. And unfortunately, that's the same thing with the abduction phenomenon. I mean, you, you do get some really good, credible people uh in 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 doing the research with like all uh, like Stanton Freeman and uh, others, but you know for the most part mainstream science you talk about UFOs they laugh you out you know and ruin your career because they don't want the you know, they don't want to upset the apple cart. You know that's again that's I'm I'm lucky that way because I literally have some of the top scientists and physicists in the world involved in my case. And how they got involved, um, I had a smart researcher who would send them stuff anonymously and said, hey, I want you to tell me what this is and not tell them where they got it from. Like, for instance, I had an implant that um, they took out of my hip, and it was sent to Cal Berkeley. And they flipped out because they'd never seen anything like it before. I mean, virus-sized computer chips, what they think are computer chips, you know, and tiny microscopic little gear things and all this crazy stuff that we just don't have at the time didn't have the technology and so then you know they started they started jumping on board um dr claude swanson you know was one of the top uh physicists in the country you know i've got all these people all these amazing people involved and then there's these, the group that was on larry king live that said oh it's all fake and this is why it's fake it's like are you kidding me yeah you guys are you know, but that's the way it is. And I understand that people, if they're frightened, they'll do anything to try to stop their reality bubble from being burst. I, I was one of those people. I mean, it terrified the heck out of me. But now that it's happened, I, I won't change it for the world because I get to live outside the box now. Now, wasn't there also some people within MUFON who were also trying to pretty much debunk your story and go against you? 
Well, there was a guy named uh, James Carrion who got hooked up with MUFON, and um, nobody really knows how he got hooked up with MUFON. He actually got fired. MUFON fired him uh, because he started trying to debunk my case, and there was a lot of people in, in, in MUFON that's been there. Again, when stuff happens, it only seems to happen when people are around. James Carrion, the head of MUFON, had really didn't know much about my case, but he suddenly went off the deep end. He was trying to debunk um, Roswell. He was trying to debunk my case. All the major cases he was saying was all just made up. And MUFON, after he started doing this, he lasted like a month. And now um, him and MUFON are in a legal battle. Hmm. Yeah. So this guy was one of those, probably was a government. In fact, he admitted he was government. He was Army Intelligence. I mean, you could go online and look yourself. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I pretty much, uh, I've read his uh, whole blog, James Carrion. Um, he says that he uh, resigned from MUFON. Uh, there, yeah, was, there was, there was, other, there was a lot of other factors involved. That, you know, it wasn't just your case. That's what he said, but I can tell you he what he didn't resign. They let him. They let it look like he resigned. He didn't resign at all. He was fired. I got a call from John Schuessler like um, a week after he started doing this, and from Leslie, uh, what's her name? She was a Colorado MUFON and head of Colorado MUFON, and they both told me they said, um, you know, the the panel, you know, the governing panel is kicking him out. Because he started bad mouthing all their top cases, even though they had all this all this evidence. I've got so much evidence; it's unbelievable. Not only that, but you know, uh, for instance, um, you know, when I talk about people seeing stuff stuff happening when when people are around, you know, like uh, the producer for Good Morning America for ABC Twenty Twenty. Um, in fact. Uh, I was on uh, 2020 prime time, and the first producer they sent out got to see a massive sighting right over the house, and they fired her after that. They hired somebody else. Oh, and it's all documented. You know, and when I hear things like that, my blood boils because I'm just so tired of the crap of you know uh, our society seems to be sleepwalking they don't want to acknowledge that and i'm not only talking about you know the abduction experiences but there are so many strange things going on in this world and w what we consider to be reality just isn't because we have our idea what reality should be and we stick with it and you know the media tries to hammer it into our head and you know our, everybody growing up this is the way we're supposed to be this is the way you're supposed to think and we, we're not allowed to think outside the box and we, you know, as a paranormal researcher myself, we've had so many strange experiences that we we're able to back up with video and audio and personal experiences that, you know, you try to show them to people. They just don't want to hear it. They don't want to see it. If, if when we usually get interviewed, and I know you've experienced this, you get in, interviewed half the time by the media. They're, they're always doing it with their tongue in their cheek or they're raising eyebrows and rolling eyes. And yeah. and, and it's always has a caveat of, oh, well, this is a strange little story. Not like as it should be, you know, the biggest story of mankind. And they don't want to hear it. Yeah. And there's a reason. There, I'm finding out that there is something, be it off-world, be it on-world, it doesn't matter. But there is some effort to keep us from evolving. They don't want us to evolve because they're afraid of us. And so, you know, what they've done is they created this. But guess what? <laughs> there's things that are bigger, bigger than they are that are sick of it. And it's going to change soon. But, um, you know, unfortunately, some people are going to be left behind if they don't snap out of it and pull their head out of the sand. A big Mack truck is going to run them over. You, so. you may not get this reference, but we need Roddy Rowdy Piper. <laughs> <laughs> Rowdy Rowdy Piper. No, if you ever see that old movie, uh, They Live, the John Carpenter movie, where it turns oh, out that... Oh, yeah, 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 no kidding. All the yuppies were really space aliens, and they're using mind control with people. And actually, that movie, believe it or not, for a little B movie that was actually pretty cool, 
um, had a lot of parallels for what is going on today in terms of media control and Absolutely. trying to keep people conformed. And and uh, it's a great movie. If you ever get a chance to rent it, people, go out and watch it. It's a lot of fun. Hey, Stan, before we let you go, can I ask you a real question? Uh, a question I, I wanted to ask you before, but we sure. kind of went away and I didn't want to backtrack. When you When you came out and you were interviewed by Fox and you had that blackout, where because it wasn't it didn't cut it didn't air did it ever air oh, yeah, after yeah. that yeah did it ever air after it, that it it um didn't it aired but not what's weird about that that um when the ufo came down and beamed my van in the middle of lakewood and you know there were thousands of people that saw it happen um the center of the blackout was right where the ufo beamed my van and it affected about Thirty to 60,000 homes. Jeez. Oh, wow. That's and, um, you know, one of the researchers called and said, you know, they got this, this, this person that said, oh, somebody hit a power line, a wooden pole, and it knocked out the power line. And then they called back, and they got a completely different story. And what's interesting, if you watch the video, you can hear sirens in the background because people were calling this stuff in because, you know, it's not every day during rush hour a UFO beams a van in the middle of, uh, you know, a big suburb of Colorado. <laughs> and, um, you know, they went, uh, the researchers uh, had some private investigators, hired some investigators, and one of them was actually a sheriff. And they tried to get the records for that day um, of all the local fire departments, ambulances, police, everything. And every single one of those for that day had no incidences whatsoever. No kidding. Nothing happened, they said. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure it didn't. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, we're getting close to the end of the hour here. Uh, I just wanted to ask, Dan, what, you are, what are you currently working on these days? You have your new books coming out. And uh, mm-hmm. are, are you doing any speaking or doing any other uh, programs at this point? Um, I'm I'm actually taking a little bit of a rest break. I went hot and heavy um, uh, the early part of this year. I've got some stuff coming up in September. Um, I'm going to be out in Arizona. I was supposed to go to uh, Gulf Breeze, Florida, but you know with the price of gas and everything, it's too expensive. Mm. So a lot of these um, conferences are shutting down. But I'm doing a talk um, by myself, and it's a full presentation. If you haven't seen it, I think people are always really quite um, uh, entertained and amazed. Um, it will be in Phoenix on the 17th of September. Um, I've got some, you know, a few more radio shows to do, and if anybody decides they want me to come talk, I'll be happy to. But that's what's coming up, and then. I've got uh, a book that was kind of prematurely released called The Orion Regressions. It's got to do with uh, the regressions I did with Dr. Leo Sprinkle where some really bizarre stuff happened. And it kind of ties my first book and my second book, or I should say my third book, together, Answers. And Answers is going to be the big one that um, it's a message of hope and it tells the human race who they are and what they're about and what to expect and what's coming up and it really is and this is the information that I'm getting not only from the guys upstairs but um, you know I've got a lot of military friends now a lot of generals a lot of uh, you know heads of state and stuff like that that are telling me all this stuff and I'm putting it, putting it in the book that's great so at this point when can people expect to see uh, both the answers and the Orion regressions come out well, the Ryan regressions were out for a little bit. We had to uh, stop selling it because there were some mistakes. The editor kind of um, just put it out there, or the publisher just put it out there, and um, they, they kind of screwed up a little bit. So, um, But everything, the Ryan regressions will be out first, and we're hoping that should be out within a few weeks. And then answers at least early uh july for answers end of may um i mean end of june early july for the big book okay and if people want to uh learn more about your experiences you have your website right how can they get um see your website www.stanromanek that's s t a n r o m a n e k.com stanromanek.com 
Okay, great. So people can go to your website, uh, catch up on what um, latest news, where you'll be appearing, when you're appearing, and, of course, when the, uh, the new books come out. Um, Stan, I really wanted to thank you for coming on tonight. This has really been a fascinating discussion. I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Okay, well, definitely after your new book comes out and I get a chance to read it, we're going to probably have to have you come back in and uh, talk a little bit more about that uh, because, uh, you know, we're not going to spoil it. Let people let people get a chance to read a book, and then we'll bring you back and we'll talk more about it. And I hope you'll come back. Okay. okay, great. Well, uh, that's it for Unknown Origins Radio tonight. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And as usual, tune in every single week at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the Decadence Radio Network. And peace, everyone. Have a good night.